Welcome to Download Success, a podcast where we sit down with business owners and entrepreneurs and discuss life, strategies to manifest success, and the ugly truth about running a business. Are you ready? Yo, 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 what up? My name is Chris, and I'll be your host for Download Success. Aside from Download Success, I'm also a business owner and entrepreneur. Sole business owner of Cornerstone Masons here in Central Kentucky area, uh, where we design and build custom masonry. And I'm Phil, your co-host and executive producer for Download Success. But in real life, I run a full-service web design company based in Lexington, Kentucky, Click Factory. Well, you found us. The first episode of the Download Success podcast. Downloadmysuccess.com. Go like, share, and subscribe right now. Man, oh man, we have got a good one for you today. And I am just so excited because we've been planning this for so long that it's nice to be able to finally sit down in person with fellow business owners and have a conversation and learn about what they've been through, the ups, the downs, and how they've managed to get through the hard times. Not only that, just the energy that stems from that and being able to relate to them like what we were talking about earlier as far as um, it being a completely different be- uh, completely different business, but at the same respect, it's, it's all the same right. when it comes to the business aspect of it, regardless of what trade you're in or what profession you're in or what career path you've chosen, it's all the same. Right. With that being said, we've got a couple of guests today that I think you will thoroughly enjoy uh, and what they're going to bring to the table as far as their knowledge and wisdom that they've retained over the last 35 years 35 years. I can't believe that. Unbelievable. Um, we've got Rick and Raina with Fullard Construction. Uh, they're based out of uh, Lexington area, service primarily uh, central Kentucky. We've got a, a great story that, that they're going to bring to the table. And this is just an opportunity for business owners to sit down with other business owners to get a feel um, for different aspects of business and get some feedback on what's worked in their life, um, some of the obstacles that they've overcome and and maybe some uh, some tips on on how we can move forward as business owners rick you want to you want to introduce yourself yeah i'm rick fullard uh, i own fullard construction company in lexington um been in business for uh really close to 40 years i've been in business all my life really um as chris mentioned um just thinking about success thinking about Stories. I, for one, uh, I could spend the next day, and I have actually written a book <laughs> about nice. about my life um, and where we come from. So, as I relate that to thinking about success in business, um, trying to really narrow that down to, uh, I just really feel that the success is is really relative to perspective. It has a great deal to do with uh, how we perceive life, what we see in life, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about our lives, how we feel about the people that that surround us, whether that be friends or or family. All those things greatly depend on how we think. Um, We all come from varied backgrounds. I, for one, grew up the poorest of poor. Um, I was gone from home before I ever had indoor plumbing. Um, we I re- can recall no electricity. Um, I can recall the first air conditioner that I ever saw, which was a 50-pound block of ice in a, fi- in a number two foot tub with a fan blowing behind it. Wow. Um, so, you know, having, <clears throat> having come from nothing... Um, <laughs> you, well, you should learn a lot if you've had the opportunity. Uh, and as I think about my family, I, I was really the most blessed probably of all. And I, I sort of relate this in uh, I'm a faith-based person. So my faith and my understanding from a Judeo-Christian uh, background, basically, uh, I relate greatly to the story of Gideon. Um, Gideon was the least of all, of of everyone, and yet God greeted Gideon with these words, go in thy own might and and conquer. Uh, If you read that story in the book of Judges, those things are are 
they're vital. They've influenced my life. That story has. Um, as to, he said that he was the least of the least of all the tribes, and that's sort of the way I was growing up. Um, the least, probably, in my family. I was the first to ever graduate from high school. I was the first to ever go to college, uh, and the least likely, probably. Uh, but that's just the blessings of life and people in my life that have influenced my life over the years and come into my life at exactly the right time. So who we surround ourselves with and have that opportunity um, is really, it's, it's what makes us. What I think all this, though, everything that we do in life is, is dependent upon how we think. Um, so how we think about everything. And I think our perspective really comes from how we have allowed ourselves, uh, or some people allow themselves, we all probably do, uh, to be sort of psychologically conditioned, I think, to, to live. You know, and these things, we're confronted every day with all kinds of issues. I, I, I read recently where the average person is dealing with a, a around 638 issues at any one time. That's hard to imagine. That seems like a tremendous number of things, but yet if you stop, if you could just stop for a moment and analyze those things, you really do begin to see, wow, there's a lot going through my mind right now. Sure. And these are things that have to be dealt with. And how are we going to think about those things? Um, uh, that psychological conditioning that we allow ourselves to get into. And, I, and I've been in it. I've allowed that to happen. Um, well, and the subconscious mind is, is a very powerful thing, um, more so than you, than you know, because it's subconscious, right? So sometimes our subconscious mind is telling us things that we don't know. But we'd also know that there's a way that you can train the subconscious mind. And it is about the way you speak to yourself. Yeah, the way, that's right. The way, the way you think. It's, uh, someone put it like it's, it's, it's like we, we allow ourselves to, to be put in a cage, mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that cage controls our lives, whether that's a tough childhood. Uh, Chris, you've shared, you know, you, you've had a tough childhood. Sure. I had a tough childhood. I, I too, grew up without a father. Mm -hmm. I grew up— I, I had a, a great childhood. Yeah. Yeah. I was lucky. I want to touch on <laughs> something that you, you talked about, and I, and I completely agree with, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm a firm believer that— uh, that I become a product of my environment, the people and the places that I put myself around is what I become mm -hmm. if I'm not aware, right? Consciously aware of what's going on and subconsciously in the back of my mind, I'm being molded and um, molded into this person that the society deems uh, that we should be, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to be able to break that cycle, to, to be able to reflect on my life now at 42 years old and take a look back, hindsight's 20, 20 mm -hmm. and take a look back at certain aspects of my life and certain things that's went on, um, I can understand how it was necessary for the molding and the pruning process of where God's taking me, but also how I need to be aware of the people and the places that I put myself around, because that's necessary too, um, as far as consciously and and, and it's necessary. I know you said you had children, too. And, and for the record, I'm Raina Fullard, Rick Fullard's daughter. <laughs> you know, it's it's important um, to, to break those generational, not gaps, but the generational trauma that can be caused. Like, you know, absolutely. I mean, daddy just said he had he had a bad childhood. He's my father. I had a fantastic childhood. And so in just one generation, he's completely changed the trajectory of, of life, sure. specifically his four children and his eight grandchildren mm, because, grandchildren. and two great grandchildren, <laughs> because he chose to not create the same life that can he we, had. Can we touch a little bit up on that and how you came to those, uh, those decisions? How, you know, at, at what point did you understand that, you know, this was an issue because I know that for myself, Understanding that it's generational curses, mm -hmm. right? It's it's, it's mm -hmm. stuff that's just been passed down from generation after generation after generation, and uh, me being aware of that, as opposed to just um, surrendering to mm -hmm. that, right? And being an overcomer, uh, which faith plays a big part, <clears throat> a big role in that in my life. But uh, is there what happened? At what point, and can you recall even, because there's some things I can recall, and then there's things that it just I, I look up one day and I'm like, wow, I've changed mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there was a conscious moment. Um, 
I grew up with a single mom uh, who was um, a hard worker. She had a third grade education. She packed honey all day for 75 cents an hour and was a cocktail waitress at night. Mm. So I was a latchkey kid before that terminology was ever coined, mm. really. Um, but my mother instilled in me a, um, a desire to, I was blessed, really, is what it comes down to. Just very fortunate to actually be a fairly cute kid. That helps. Sure. <laughs> it it, it does relate. help. No. So that, that awareness of that that you just mentioned, Chris, that, that was an awareness. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I was a good athlete. So Which also those helps. two things um, and the coaches and the teachers and those things were influenced my life very early. Uh, you know, we lived on a dead end dirt street. Uh, we had nothing. Uh, when the coaches would come pick me up, they dropped me off at the corner because I wouldn't let them go down there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was always aware of where I was. Mm -hmm. And but my mother instilled in me. She was she taught herself to read. Uh, I tell this story. I, I've always, I think it's just so funny. I mean, we had one one bed. That's all we had. So at night, my mother, who had taught herself to read, would read Harlequin romance stories to me. And she'd read these stories, and there'd be these long gaps mm -hmm. where there was nothing. Well, I didn't know any difference. I would just go along, and she would read. And I was a grown man with children before I was in an airport. And I picked, saw a Harlequin romance novel. I picked it up, started reading it. Then I realized why she was leaving out so much <laughs> parts. <laughs> you know? But the point is that she taught me, and she instilled in me um, I could take care of myself. She was no, she had to work. And so she was never around. So I started to work when I was six years old. I paid social security when I was seven years old. Wow. And that goes all the way back to 1950. Tell them what that job was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I painted curbs and painted gas stations and washed windshields and through uh, newspapers. Yeah. Through newspapers. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always what had. What do you mean through newspapers? Yeah. He was a paper boy. Paper oh, boy. Okay. oh, okay. He was an actual paper boy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, those don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, he did whatever it was to help mom, who worked hard and you know tried to keep me able to really compete. Uh, the peer pressure it was there. You know, kids back then we wore Basswegian shoes, uh, and they cost you know five dollars and twenty five cents a pair. Levi's were three twenty-five. dollars When you're making $0.75 cents an hour, that's a blow. Yeah. So to keep that, I mean, I, I just start, I started to work. Mm -hmm. And I bought my own clothes. Mm -hmm. So uh, at 10, when she remarried for the fourth time, I always tell people, or bless her heart, her, her picker was broken. I mean, she married the same guy four times. <laughs> they just had different last names. Mm -hmm. So that influenced the... the, the the brutality of, of that last guy, uh, I always refer to him as Satan incarnate. Um, I was gone. I left, you know. And so the story from there is just goes on and on and on. When well, you're, and I when think, you're on the street. I think what it brings up is the subject of mothers and how mothers, <clears throat> they save us, you know, because, you know, you asked if there was a pivotal moment in his life. Well, obviously his mother, but... Also, my mother, you know, and my yeah. mother, when my mother came into his life, oh, I yeah. think that that was a pivotal moment and really saying, okay, I'm not going to create the same life for my children that I had. Sure. Um, because she was. Yeah, she was a savior. She was me, the all American in, in girl, you know, in yeah. uh, and found this really bad boy. And decided to, to marry him. And I, I don't want to cut you off, but I, no. I think that so the. The most negative things in my life is where I've grown the most. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as being on this pink cloud, which I can get, and I love being there, but I know at some point it's gonna, it's gonna end. Um, but you know, a lot of the negative things that's happened in my life has probably launched me forward mm -hmm. and give me a different perspective on so many different things that was necessary. It was absolutely necessary when we talk about. You know how Rick, how you grew up, and I can relate. I grew up in the middle of Lexington, over here on Smith Street, which is a predominantly black neighborhood. I was my sister and I were the only white people on this bus stop, 
and it was tough. We grew up in a shotgun house, and that's just a house that you can look through the front mm-hmm. door and straight out right, the back. Right. We had plywood flooring with ice that would stand two inches tall in the wintertime, go to the refrigerator at any given time, and there would be a pitcher of tea in there with a quarter of a pitcher and a can of corn with two bites taken out. So at a young age, I knew that <clears throat> it was humiliating to go to school, so I quit in the ninth grade. Um, yeah. We didn't have the nice clothes and, and shoes, so it, you know, it was just tough for us to, to, to get into, for me, to get into school. And, because kids are brutal, man. Mm-hmm. And the way that, the, you know, the schools that I went to and just the way that um, some, of the, some of the kids that, that I had to deal with. So, but looking back, like all of that stuff, every bit of it, as much as... I'd like to um, carry this trauma with me, and I do, but I, consciously I'm able to look at that stuff now and see how it was so necessary mm-hmm. in the development and, and where God was leading me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I meant in the, in the very beginning. You know, that's, <clears throat> Chris, that's perspective, mm-hmm. and that's relative to, to you. It's relative to me. It's relative to all of us, but it's that, it's that perspective because I think if we— if we continue to allow, if we don't come to that point where we see these pivotal moments in our life and we, we take a stand or we, we move forward, um, those self-imposed jail cells that we, that we mm. put ourselves mm-hmm. in, and once, mm-hmm. if, we've, if we've realized it, then we should be able to do something about it. Sure. <clears throat> I mean, coming to that point, and if, if we out, allow ourselves to, <clears throat> to stay jail, so to speak, then, you know, it drains us. It drains us of our mental energy, and when we're drained of that mental energy, um, <laughs> it leads us to really poor decision making. Mm-hmm. So it's whether and in business, those poor decisions they'll kill you. You know, they kill you financially, or they just kill you. They drain you. So living that self-imposed cells, so to speak, that I said that we put ourselves in. Um, Bad decision making, and you can't survive in business. You can't be successful in business. You can't really be successful in life in general if you if we continue to make bad decisions. Those are gaps, you know. And do, where do we? I think for me, one of the real overarching things in my life, and of of trying to understand over the years, is is a simple word called stewardship. Mm. You know how. How can we be good stewards of these gifts, these talents, these things that we have, whether we believe that those are God-given or wherever they come mm-hmm. from, but how do we become good stewards? Uh, there, there was a point in my life, and I do think it had a lot to do with your mom, right, uh, where her life, so different from mine, um, made me stop and realize, wait, you know, I can, I can make a difference here. Uh, finding the right life partner is is. is Crucial. It, mm. it, it certainly makes a difference in our lives. Um, I think really <clears throat> what I'm saying it, it, here is that our minds, most of the time, I would say, my for me anyway, that's our greatest battlefield mm-hmm. in in life, uh, uh, just personal life or whether or business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. you know, it's 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 right here and. Um, it's it's in our minds where um, fear mm. is nurtured, mm. and it's there where it it, it grows, uh, and it's fear of things. I, I've done it. I've had I have feared things and thought that these things were going to happen, and then lived long enough to see that hell those things never happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So mm-hmm. you know why fear? But fear fear kills. It kills everything, um, and I think I think for me Especially too. Especially success. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Um, again, if we, I know this is not necessarily a faith-based kind of thing, but yet it is because that's where that's where I come from. Absolutely. You know, I've I've learned and in, in my studies and my understanding. Uh, for me, I, I used some of us grew up and saw. Um, you know, uh, Charlton Heston in uh, the great epic movie. Um, you know, and we think about Moses leading the people out and leading them to the promised land. They get to the Red Sea, right? And what do we see? Uh, we see, you know, him raise up a staff and the waters parted. Well, 
that's not the way my life has run worked. You know, the only way I might get to that Red Sea, and we all have Red Seas in our lives. There are things that block us. You know, but how do how do we see that? What again? What is what is our perspective? Because really, what happened is that that water didn't part until Moses stepped in the water. And when we step in the water and we take that, we, we move that fear and eliminate it from our minds, and we take that step. Um, Which is I've, where faith comes in. Right? It, do, it, yeah. is, it does. I th- I've told my kids, and she can tell you over and over, and I've told every one of them, and I live it. It's on my mirror. It's in my mirror. It's in my life. I, there, and again, it's, it's, a, it's biblically based in an understanding of creation and how... I choose to believe that there is a God, and there is a God who created everything that is, everything that was, and everything that will be. That's right. Yeah. And if that's the case, how was that created? Well, that was created because God said, let there be. Mm. So I've, I've told them, and you can quote it, what is it? Speak. Speak. Speak what is not as though it is, yeah. something like that. So speak <laughs> things that are not as though they were. Oh, so close. Yeah. <laughs> well, it goes with uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue, yeah. right? If we speak it, we can speak it into That's, existence. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I bought property. I, I bought, added to my business uh, by speaking it. Mm. I passed by people that I thought I should call on and, and, and stop. And just keep going by, but then also stop speaking it. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to own that building. I'm going to own those storage buildings. I'm going to own those billboards. I'm going to I'm going to do this. So let it be. That's how Fuller Construction manifested once again. You know, because we said I came to you mm-hmm. in May of 2020, and I said we are going to do this. This is going to be successful. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, and it's not a straight path, but we're we're definitely getting there. Yeah, and we're successful. Yeah, yeah, and we we we've, we've been blessed. Mm-hmm. You know, we had goals. We we we're goal oriented. I am. I like to have some something out there in front of me to to work towards. Um, we didn't meet the goal, and it was it was a numbers goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to see it. You know, and in our first year, if we could do a million five in gross revenue, we'd be really happy. Sure. You know, we didn't quite meet it. We reached a million, mm-hmm. so you know, I'm not I'm not complaining uh, because we've been able to work. We've been able to eat. I, I Raina mentioned earlier. I've I've said you know, and I've had those times when I thought that perhaps somebody might eat me, mm. you know, but I've found out they can't. Sure. And yeah. one of the things that I've learned is that I I've, I've never missed a meal. Mm. I've had housing. I've had clothing, you know. And again, consider the lilies. Consider the sparrows. Consider those things that are that are out there that are toiling and spinning. <laughs> but you know, sun comes up tomorrow. I mean, just keep keep moving ahead. I, I I think so. That stewardship thing and being good stewards of everything that we have and all the blessings that we we have. Uh, if I could, <laughs> we fall into that. Fear, and we allow our minds, I think, to be, or we just allow ourselves to be victims mm-hmm. um, to, <clears throat> to fear. That poor, pitiful me mentality. I yeah. can't believe this is happening to me. And I like what you were talking about as far as stewardship. I was just in a conversation um, the other day. We're blessed to be a blessing, right? And, you know, throughout my life, and I, I didn't, I came from a rough background, you know, so um, it just took me a minute to understand um that you can only keep what you've got by giving it away, uh, whether that be financially, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, right? And this conscious contact that I have with God on a regular basis is important. It's so imperative into the relationships that I'm trying to build, whether it be an, an intimate relationship, a personal relationship, or a business relationship, uh, which has been hard for me to kind of maintain, too, as far as relationships are concerned, because I didn't have love. So mm-hmm. for me to give that back, was foreign to me. I didn't know how to give something that I never received mm-hmm. until I received it from the one and only, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And um, stewardship as far as being responsible, because as a business owner, new in business, what I understand is there is a responsibility that I have as a business owner. Um, and it, it 
so for success for me is completely different than what it was three years ago. Um, it was about buying brand new trucks and putting my toes in the sand down in Cancun, sipping on margaritas, which I don't drink now, but you know, that's where my mind went to today. Success for me is freedom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Freedom to be able to raise my children. So I don't pass down these generational curses mm -hmm. over and over again to be able to, to provide first and foremost, we want to be comfortable financially, but more than that, my, my whole perspective on success is completely, and I'm sure that maybe you can share a little bit about, about that, Rick. My, it's completely changed yeah. in three years sure. what success is to me. Yeah, yeah my, and mine changes. I mean, chronology has something to do with that. You know, I, I am 71, but I never, I don't usually tell people that I'm old. I, I'm, I just say that I'm chronologically advantaged. <laughs> You know, I mean, I've lived, certainly if you live as long as I lived, I, my uncle used to say that he was, he'd say his age, but there aren't very many men my age who have lived as long as I have. Sure. Now that says a lot. There's some deep thinking that has to go into that statement. So I know over my life, my, I was the same way. You know, I used to, I, I, I really felt the need to, to live up to someone else's expectation of what mm -hmm. success mm -hmm. was, because mm -hmm. that's all I knew. It was not model for me either. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out what that was. So I bought the Cadillacs, you know, and I drove the Cadillacs and had the nice things and did all that, but it was, I was miserable. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's not what it's about. It, I think it's that life balance that we mentioned earlier, you know, how do you, how do you keep that or how do you maintain it? Um, I don't know that I've ever learned it other than just like I you know, said, if I can keep one foot on the bus, and when that opportunity presents itself to enjoy the fruits of my labor, then to enjoy them and not get so wrapped up because I am a workaholic. I can work all day long, all night long, and just keep on going. Yeah. That's not, it's just not healthy, but that view of success, I think it does change, and that's a good thing. Change is, is good. Um, well, and Chris, it, I mean, when you said, you know, success to you is, is freedom, yeah. that really hits because... Yeah. It's true. When I think about, you know, just the trajectory of how I've, you know, I just left, you know, a job, a career that I had for six years and, you know, and a lot of it had to do with freedom. Mm -hmm. I wanted freedom. I wanted to be able to take a breath. Sure. I wanted to be able to find that balance between, you know, life, work and family, mostly family. And, you know, I think that's really where balance comes in because we think, okay, well, work balance life is okay, work, 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 vacation. But really, it's mostly about work, family, work and family. And you know, something we do that's really great, uh, every second Sunday of the month, we, we get together, and there's a lot of us, because <laughs> you know, four children and eight grandchildren, two grand, oh, great, and then spouses, spouses and right. all, you know, it's, we've learned to embrace the chaos, but um, <laughs> You know, every second Sunday we get together as a family, and to me that's balance, sure. right? Because it's a way to recharge the batter your batteries and, and be around the people you love, mm. and the people that you're you're most comfortable with, and so. And that's called second Sunday at Papa's. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's a, it's been a great it's been a great thing. It has. Um, yeah, he usually tells a story or two. So. <laughs> you know, I think that we allow, and I think you hit on it, Raina. You know that fear and how that influences us it's, it's where we fall in and we fall victim to i think that that, that train <laughs> uh, to our own train of thought time and time and time and time again if we if we live our lives in that kind of fear um, and our own thoughts if that's where they are they just fool us over and over and over so again for me that i think success is all about perspective for uh, if we continue to allow those self-defeating thoughts into our life um, and to just stay there and dwell in our minds, guess what? They will succeed. Mm -hmm. That's where success happens. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there, success happens all around us, whether that be negative or positive. Sure. But we, can, we can allow and control that, I think. And it, it robs us. And what that robs us of is that balance of life. It, it, it robs us of our peace, it, it, of our joy, of our, our happiness, our productivity, uh, our, our very meaning in why we were created to start with. We get, we get lost in it. And ultimately, it costs us our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and then we cannot be good stewards. Sure. 
We can't pass on. We can't make a difference because we're so wrapped up and, and wrapped up in fear. I, I think I think we've all probably experienced it. We, you know, we've. I know I have. I've had those times when I felt like very strongly something just isn't right, mm -hmm. right? Uh, about this, or something is is not going right. Something is not working right, whether it's business, whether it's personal life, or whatever. Um, and when you get those thoughts, it's like something's got to change, right? I mean, I've got to got to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, and and we we do that. And I what what I've come to realize, <clears throat> and this again it can be it can be, I can put a name to it. For me, it's it's a, it's the spirit of God that lives in me. Some people call it an inner voice. Mm -hmm. That inner voice, when the moment that we're prompted to think something's not right here. Something's wrong. Something needs to change. That's someone guiding us. That's an inner voice that we need to be tuned Call to. Call it what you want to, mm -hmm. but something's so, there mm -hmm. giving Something that is guidance. there. That's yeah. right. And, mm -hmm. and then we have to make that decision, I think, to, to make those changes. Uh, and we've all experienced that. And really what that is, and to name it a, fr a friend of mine call that, well, man, that's just your wake-up call. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, wake up. Something something's not right. So you know we do we do something about. Would you it, say right? following that inner voice or or God or gut intu intuition, whatever you call it, is one of the main things that probably led you to success? I do think so. Yeah, I because I, I do trust my intuition. I don't I don't see. How do you learn to trust <clears throat> it? Well, I think because it's, it's my, a hard thing. Yeah. It's a hard thing to tap into as well. well and right. then learning to trust it is a whole nother level, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that, let, let, me inter, let me interject here for just a moment because, you know, for me, as far as the relationship that I have with God, um, it was a process. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something. And I had to, in order for me to build a relationship with you, Rick, there's going to be conversation that takes place. There's going to be time that's spent with you, right? So if I'm wanting direction in life because I don't have a clue what I'm doing out here by myself, then I'm going to have to lean on something or somebody else. And in order for me to understand or even recognize that voice, because I can talk to you till I'm blue in the face, but if I don't listen to you speak to me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to understand or even, um, uh, I'm not going to be able to identify who you are by your voice. Mm -hmm. So that personal relationship that I have with God and it's been a process, right? Mm -hmm. And to be able to discern, discern what's God's voice and what's God's will for my life and what's Chris's voice and what's Chris's will. And where are you, where are you taking this guidance from? Is it from ego? Is it from fear? Is it from, you know, where, where does it stem from? Anxiety? Where's it stemming from? But as long as I continue to put God first in my life um, and I keep that constant connection with him because I can veer off for six or seven months and I'm not as familiar. That voice isn't as familiar, and I can mistake my voice, mm -hmm. that inner voice of Chris's, for God's, and then that'll lead me down a, a road of chaos. So I don't know if that's yeah. It's the relationship, basically. Right. Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. about relationship, mm -hmm. and I think in, as a company, and what we think about, and we think about a lot. And I talk to my clients about relationship. We're building a relationship here. I go into someone's home, and we're going to spend eight or nine months there, mm -hmm. or perhaps a year, mm -hmm. and they're living in the house. You, you better build some you kind of relationship because it'll drive you absolutely <laughs> crazy. I, I, I would just say that I think you know, getting that wake up call. That's the easy part. That's the easy part. Answering that call mm -hmm. is the difficult part. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. how, how do you answer that call when we hear it? What, what do we do? Um, so for me, that comes back to that understanding of, can I be a good steward of these gifts and these talents? And if I can think about stewardship, I can reach out beyond myself and the moment that I reach out and look beyond myself. It's like you can always find somebody that has it worse than you. Sure. Well, if you look, you, that's right, you, mm -hmm. you'll find them. Mm -hmm. But if you reach out and you'll touch, because touch is, is so vital to our lives. It's vital to relationship. And, and we can touch in so many different ways. You know, it's, for me, it's not just about, I mean, I, I enjoy building. I enjoy seeing something start from nothing and, and going up. I get a great deal of satisfaction out of that. But it's really about can, 
can I make a difference in this person's life sure. by building them a home mm -hmm. or by remodeling their home? Am I touching their life in some kind of way? Because my faith, again, tells me that the one that I serve and the one that I understand and have that personal relationship with is touching me at all times. And everything that I know about that person, that's exactly what ministered on the spot, touched, reached out and touched. If I could just touch the hem, and sometimes that's what we have to do. We We're have to allow to our hymn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We have to ha we have to allow our him to be touched sometimes, mm -hmm. and we've got to touch those. Um, and we fall. I fell short. You know, fall short every day. Uh, well, I think you just summed up exactly what success is. It's it's about other people. It's not about you. It's about the relationship one that you have with with God, the relationship that you have with yourself. So that you can be a steward and reach out to the and people. in that order, like, yeah, 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 so that you can you know make a difference in people's lives. I mean, I feel like if you make that the basis. I mean, I, I remember when iHeart hired me, you know, and in in the interview process, they said, you know, I said, is this a numbers game? Because if it is, I can't play. But if it's about helping people, then I'm in. And that kind of, I kept, I tried, again, fell short, because <laughs> the numbers kind of sometimes take over. But in the forefront of my mind, I always wanted to say, can I help this person? Is me, what I'm doing going to be able to help, you know, project their business and, and make them more successful? Yeah. And, you know, and, and create those relationships along the way. So. They matter. They do. Yeah. I think um, for me, it, it, it passion's for me, the I've been in the masonry industry for almost 30 years, and um, I'm just passionate about it. I think a lot of that stems from just spending enough, as much time as I've spent around it. But more than that, what I'm understanding today, and it just to kind of piggyback off of what you guys were talking about, was being in a position, right? Because now there is a, res a sense of responsibility that I have to be a good steward of the not only the blessings— but my experience and to be right. able to touch somebody else and say, hey, you know what? I did all this so you don't ever have to go through this. I've already went through this. Mm -hmm. um, and to be passionate about people in general. I just love people mm -hmm. most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. But no, I do. And, I, mm -hmm. and I, I, what frustrate, I do love people. Mm -hmm. What really frustrates me is um, I'd like to think that I'm the smartest person in the room. I know I'm not. But I do know where I've been. And I do know what I experienced, and mm -hmm. I do understand uh, the consequences beside, but behind some of the decisions that I made. So I've got a 22-year-old daughter, and we are rebuilding a relationship now, and that's more difficult than any job I've ever <laughs> tried to take on, right? But the passion that I have behind wanting to help people see and understand some of the things that I've seen and understand today, which came by falling on my face and just so much pain and healing from these generational uh, curses that I've had to, you know, overcome. So the passion that I have is is for people, and this is the platform that God's given me, mm -hmm. right, to be able to build relationships with our customers. And because ultimately, when we leave there, you know, these are what I'd like to see happen is for these guys to call on us in the future, even if it's just for a suggestive contractor because they can trust who we are and what we've brought to the table and the conversations that we've had and so forth and so on. My frustration comes with dealing with um, ignorance <laughs> and that's just not knowing, right? And I'm, I'm Right. <laughs> so I'm ignorant in, in so many areas of my life and I try to be receptive to other people's um, direction or, or leadership or mentorship um, but but frustration comes in when when you see ignorance and there's really no way to get through to that person and you've got to allow them to uh, go through that experience because I'm one of those hands on type of guys mm -hmm. and you can tell me something until you're blue in the face but until I experience it you're not I'm not listening to nothing you've got to, you've got to say so um, yeah. With that being said, I think this is a great place to end this podcast. Um, really grateful for you, Rick and Raina, for coming out. Thank and you so much us. for having us, guys. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you guys. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This has been the Download Success Podcast at DownloadMySuccess.com. If you liked what you hear or want to get more information about Fullard Construction, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram and their website at FullardConstruction.com. 
And be sure to subscribe to Download Success at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes every Tuesday.